Hello and welcome back to Coloring with Haley. Today we are going to color a picture from Monster Babes by Stephanie A. Quinn. And we are going to color the nasty nurse, that's her name. So let me figure out what skin tone marker I want to use real quick. Okay, we're gonna use this one. So my week has gone better than last week. Last week was just not a good week. I got all my work done early this week, so. And I didn't have a dentist appointment, so that, that helped. Everything's going all right with college. Um, economics class is going fine, it's still just boring. It's not really my thing. I've got to give another speech next week in the speech class. I had to write the speech this week. And statistics is going better. Uh, this week was easier to understand than last week. I told you last week that we were up until like 12.30 trying to do one of the lessons. Um, well, the teacher made a big announcement in class, and apparently a lot of people really struggled with that lesson, and a lot of people, I guess, just didn't even complete it. Like, they couldn't even finish it. So she made a big announcement over it and kind of um, went over how to do the lesson with us, which was very nice and very helpful. I just wish she would have done it before, you know, everything was due if she saw a lot of people were struggling with it because I'm sure she can see how many times the lesson has to be retaken. I'm sure she can see that people are having to retake it like three or four times. One of the problems that I was struggling with so much I still do not know how to do and her explanation didn't make sense either and I've looked up videos of it and stuff. Basically she said it's just a logic-based problem, I guess, almost like a brain game or something. She said there's she said there's no formula for how to do the math for it, so that makes it kind of more difficult to understand without having a formula on how to do it, so if you're wondering what's coming through on the paper, the the writing on the back of the page shows through sometimes as you color it, but it'll it'll go away once the ink dries. It won't be visible once the uh, markers dry, so. So that's how college has been going. Not very interesting. Just busy. I did make a big purchase on Amazon that I'm excited about. Hang on, let me pull my chair up. There we go, that's better. I did make a big purchase on Amazon that I'm excited about. Um, my partner Doug and I have been taking care of some plants for some of his family members. Um, he has some family members that are, let's just say they're very comfortable, and they have several houses. And they've been spending some time down here near us and they purchased a lot of flowers to decorate their house down here and a lot of uh, big ferns and stuff and they'll spend like a week here and then they'll go back to the city for a week or two and then come back down here for a week or two so hang on okay that was the dog anyway so when they're not here you know when they're up at the city they've been paying us to um come tend to the plant and water them and trim them and stuff. So we've been doing that. And I just kind of saved up some of the money we've made from watering all the plants. I think... Yeah, alright. And I, uh... purchased something off my wish list that I've been wanting to buy for a while. I just haven't had the funds. And it actually was on sale, too, so... 
I won't tell you what it is yet, but when it gets here, I will certainly show you guys on the channel and we'll test it out together. And it's supposed to be here within a week. So I ordered it yesterday, which was Wednesday, and it said it would be here next Wednesday. We'll see if there's any delays or anything, of course. Hopefully it gets here on Wednesday. If not, that's okay. But I will be sure to show it off on the channel. I'm very excited for it to arrive. And I still want to make a purchase of some books, but I'm waiting for Deborah Muller to put out all of her... Hang on, my dog is whining. Finn! Finn, come here! Come here, what do you want? Yeah, hi! Alright, anyway, I'm waiting on Deborah Muller to put out all of her Halloween books that she's going to put out this year, and I'm just going to buy them all at once, one big bundle, you know, save some shipping money and shipping material and stuff. So I'm waiting on her to put those out before I order any books. I saw the Graveyard Ghouls cover, and she also is doing a Fall Fairy. So much I don't remember her uh, mentioning under the uh, Halloween books. So I'll also be picking up that one. I like anything fall themed. So I'll be sure to pick that up. I figured that they'd be coming out sometime soon since she showed us the uh, completed covers on her Facebook group. That makes me think that uh, the books are almost ready to go to Amazon. I'm not really sure what the process is to post a book on Amazon, but I would think that finalizing the cover would probably be one of the last steps. You might know, I don't know if you can tell, you probably can see that my nails are kind of purple. Um, I dyed my hair last weekend. I've never dyed my hair before, but I thought that might be fun to do. Especially, like, right now, since everyone's still staying home and stuff. Uh, I guess everyone had the idea, because I had to order the hair dye online. It was sold out at a shop. So I dyed my hair a dark purple color. I already have dark brown hair to begin with, so it's, it's darker than the purple that's showing up on my nails. It's not a very bright color. It is a dark, dark purple. But I think it looks good. Uh, Doug helped me to dye it because I couldn't get, like, the back of my hair and stuff. Yeah, I've never dyed my hair before, so I thought that was fun. I went to, uh, um, I don't know about you guys, but my public school was very, very, very strict on stuff like that. And uh, no one could dye their hair. If you dyed your hair, you'd be suspended until it went back to, like, its natural color. Even if you dyed your hair a natural color, like if you had blonde hair and you dyed it black or whatever the school would suspend you for it. So, you know, no one could ever dye their hair in middle school or high school or anything. No one ever got to do that. And of course, I didn't want to be suspended, so I didn't dye my hair then either. I think I'm gonna give her glittery eyeshadow. I think that it would go down to about here. Okay. So yeah, we weren't allowed to dye our hair or anything. I remember my friends that went to a different high school, um, they had different rules and they were allowed to dye their hair. I can remember even like, even like way back, I think around 2009 or something, there was this big thing going around for like pink out for breast cancer awareness and a lot of people were getting like a little, just a little strip of their hair dyed pink. To show support and I think that you know I'm pretty sure that all the salons around here like if you had your strip of your hair dyed pink the proceeds went to um make sure there you go the proceeds went to breast cancer research and uh, my school wouldn't let us do that either 
They said if we did it, we would be suspended. So yeah, I, I've never got to even dye like just a strip of my hair. So I just thought it'd be fun to dye my hair purple. And I like how it turned out. It was fun. Um, I used a higher quality dye, not the box dye. I used one that didn't have a lot of chemicals and stuff in it. So it wouldn't, you know, damage my hair or anything. I'm glad I did it. I've always wanted to, so I'm glad that I just kind of went forward and did it once. This is turning out pretty good. We're going to color all these scabs red, I think. And I know she's wearing one of those, like, shark masks. I know what they, um, look like. I've seen people with them, so I'm going to try to color the mask as accurately as I can. But we might have to use uh, some fine liners to get up in there and color around the teeth, I think. This marker is starting to go out on me, I think. I have used it a lot as a skin color, so it's probably about time that it dies on me. Would you guys like to hear any stories about how I got some of my animals? Which they're all doing good, by the way. Nothing very interesting to report as far as that goes. They um, aren't the most interesting sometimes. But I can tell you how I got them. Let's see, Bucky was the first reptile that I ever purchased. I got him back when I was 16. I, um, I had seen a video on YouTube of someone with a big blue tongue skink just like Bucky. And it was the skink's birthday. And they had prepared, like, a little party platter for the, uh, skink. And it had, like, ground turkey and sweet potatoes and berries and greens and bugs on it. And they give it to the lizard and then they sing happy birthday to it. And for whatever reason, when I was younger, I just thought this video was, like, the coolest thing. I just thought the video and the lizard were, like, the coolest thing ever. So I thought, I gotta have one of these lizards. And I had already had some weird pets before. I'd had, let's see, we'd had a mini pig, and I had had two chinchillas. I'd had zebra finches. You know, I'd had some pets that people would consider weird before, so it wasn't unusual that I would want an exotic pet. But I, I just, I, I started researching what they were, because they, the person said in the video what type of lizard they had. So I just started researching what they were, and I discovered that they didn't have to be fed bugs. You could feed them bugs, but you didn't have to feed them bugs. Um, that their main diet would be meat. You know, brown turkey, eggs, and uh, high quality dog food. So, I thought, well, that's good because I, at that time, I didn't want to keep bugs. Yes, a lot has changed because I do now breed some of my own bugs to feed all the animals I have, and I do have tarantulas, so a lot, a lot has changed. But then I didn't, I, I didn't want to have to keep bugs. I wasn't into it. The thought of it made me squeamish. Let's do the pill down here. We'll do the top half red. But anyways, I just kept researching this um, lizard. There are other types of lizards that don't eat bugs, um, iguanas being one. But iguanas get to be about six feet, so they're rather big. And I didn't really want to have an animal that big. I don't, you know, my main concern was where would I keep something that large to begin with. 
I'm looking at different pink colors for the scabs here. Okay. Yeah, my main concern was where would I keep something that size to even begin with. So I just kept looking at the skinks, kept researching them. I really, really wanted one. I was talking about wanting one to my parents. Because, you know, at that age, I'm still living with them. And then I turned 16. And that's usually when everyone gets a car, right? Or that's when a lot of people get, like, their first car. I told my parents I did not want a car. I wanted a lizard for my 16th birthday. And obviously my parents were like, that's... Hang on. Finn, what's going on? Come here. What's the matter? Hey, come here. Okay, anyway, obviously my parents were like, well, that's a lot cheaper than a car, so we can probably do that. Hi, Finn. So, they were like, well, where do we, where do we even get a lizard at? Because I'm sure most people probably wonder that. Let me find my marker that I want real quick. Here we go. Okay. So I was doing research where to find a lizard. Where am I even going to buy this thing? You know, we have like a pet co here, but they didn't have, you know, blue tongue skinks at that time. They usually had smaller lizards like leopard geckos and stuff. And um, I found a page on Facebook that was advertising a reptile show in St. Louis. And so I joined the page and I had no idea what a reptile show was. I was like, what's this? And I started looking at it. It was a fairly new thing that it kind of just started in St. Louis and it looked like a big comic-con type of event kind of you know everyone has tables set up except it was for people that like reptiles there would be people there that brung their reptiles people there selling them people there selling food for reptiles there's going to be reptile veterinarians there all kinds of stuff so i thought well i might be able to find a skink here and as it and i told my parents what if we went to this little event for my birthday. It was like, it was in the month of September, so it was a whole month before my birthday, but, you know. They were like, alright, if that's really what you want for your birthday, if you really want this lizard, we'll go get supplies for it, and then we'll go to this um, event in St. Louis. And we will see if they have any, and how much they are. I had been googling and I, I figured out you know kind of the average price so uh, we knew really what to expect but I was nervous that there weren't going to be any there even though I think that since it was one of the early reptile shows I don't think there were as many vendors as there usually are I think there was something like maybe 50 vendors I was very nervous that they either wouldn't have it or it would be sold out so we got up super early on the day of the event to make it there like in time for the doors to open. We were among some of the very first people in line and I kind of just glanced over every single table basically and if they didn't have any lizards I, I, I didn't even look at what they had. I was there for one thing and one thing only. I wanted a lizard and I was determined to get one. So I finally made it to a table near the back and lo and behold they had three little baby skinks all in a tank together sitting under their heat light and I was like that's that's it that's the type of lizard that I want my parents were like well all right pick one out and I was talking to the guy at the table um and he was like yes these are babies from this year he said that they're a very interesting species they were fun to work with you know he liked keeping them and he asked me if I wanted to um hold any of them and uh, so I had to hold all of them of course I held every single one and I looked over them all and the very last one I picked up was Bucky 
And there was just something about that one. I mean, they're, when they're babies, they kind of all look pretty much the same. Like, their differences in color don't really come out until they're adults. So, I mean, they kind of all looked the same and everything, and they were all very calm, and, you know, none of them tried to bite me or anything. But there was just something about the very last one I picked up that I was like, oh, this is the one. I just knew right away. I was like, this is the one. This is the one I gotta have. And so I told the guy that I was like, this is, this is the one that I want. And he gave me the little container to put him in. We paid for him, and then right after that we went home because I was way too excited to, uh, do anything. I wanted to get home and get his enclosure set up and put him in it. And when he was a baby, he was about, he, he fit in my hand. You know, they were little as babies. But there was just something, there was just something about him. I don't know. I, I have no idea what it was that made me pick out Bucky specifically. Just when I picked up the very last lizard, there was something about it that I was like, this is, this is the one that's calling to me. This is the one that I gotta take home. And so that is how I got Bucky. And he has been with me ever since. And blue tongue skinks do have a lifespan of 30, but most of them average about the age of 24. So he has a long life to live. He will be with me until the end. I do not ever plan to get rid of him because I'm very attached to him. That is my baby. I always joke that is, that's my child there. So he will be with me until the very, very end. But yeah, there was just something that compelled me to pick that one. I don't know, maybe it was fate or something. Because he's been a very good lizard. Um, they, they're usually a calm species to begin with. But, uh, he especially is very calm and okay with anyone kind of picking him up and touching him and stuff. So he's a good animal to use to uh, teach children about reptiles or to let people touch a reptile for the first time. A lot of people, they come over and they want to they touch one of the animals for the very first time to see what a reptile feels like. If you want to know what Bucky feels like, he feels exactly like a basketball. They're very dry feeling. So yes, I, he has been with me since then, and I don't plan on getting rid of him anytime soon, or ever at all. He is sleeping right now, because that's kind of about all he does. He sleeps during mid part of the day, and he's awake in the morning and like as the sun goes down. And then he sleeps again at night. Reptiles sleep, like, most of the time. And he's pretty easy to care for. He gets fed every two weeks, because he's kind of a big guy. Um, he is 24 inches long, by the way. That is kind of, like, on the large side for a blue tongue skink. Usually they get about 19 to 20 inches, but he just happened to get big. He is done growing. He still sheds sometimes. Similar to the snake, as I talked about in my last video, he sheds maybe two or three times a year. Um, he shed sometime last month, so he won't be shedding again anytime soon. But yeah, he's super... I would, I would recommend blue tongue skinks to someone who wants a uh, big, friendly lizard. But again, they do get big, you know... They need a lot of room. Um, the enclosure he is in right now that we had to put together is four feet by two feet by two feet. And he uses all of that space, like every last inch of it. So if you're going to ever look into getting a lizard, make sure you have the space for it as it grows. Because they do take up a lot of room. That is why that whole downstairs room is dedicated to my animals. It was the master bedroom of this house. But I decided to turn it into room for my animals and the upstairs would be our bedroom. It would be just too difficult to carry all of those enclosures upstairs. Anyways, from there on, um, I had Bucky and just him for probably 
about two years and then I started just kind of slowly acquiring more and more animals. I got a frog. My large female Pac-Man frog was like the very next animal that I purchased and I got her from a pet store. Uh, there was a locally owned pet store that went out of business like earlier this year. And she wasn't very big either. She was probably about the size of a quarter when I got her. Now she can't fit in my hand. I've got to use two hands to hold her. And from there, when I started seeing my current partner, Doug, um, I had told him about the reptile show I had gotten Bucky at. And he just thought that sounded like an interesting, fun event. So he was like, well, I want to go to one of these reptile shows. And I was like, well, we can certainly go to one, you know, they're pretty often. So we went to a reptile show together and that's where I got Miss Toad. I came home with Miss Toad. And from there on out, we've kind of just kept going to them together. Uh, you know, whenever there was one and there hasn't been one in a while because of everything happening. Obviously, you can't have big gatherings. And the little reptile show that I used to go has grown from, like, 50 vendors to now it's several stores, like, stories high. And there's usually about 200 vendors. So the little reptile show that I used to go to in itself has grown a whole lot. I think we're going to make her hair dark blue. And we've just been going pretty much, you know, regularly ever since. There's people there that we've made friends with, that we go and see them. This might be a little too dark, I don't know. And that's, that's the way we can meet up with other people, you know, even if we're not going to buy an animal, if we're not interested in animals, we still go just to meet up with everyone and to talk with other people, because obviously as a reptile show, there's so many people that share the same interests and the same hobby, and it's a good way to meet up with them all and talk to them just discuss things. And there's obviously more people there that um, sell things that aren't reptiles. There's people there selling tarantulas and people there selling frogs and stuff. And there are a few people who come and sell exotic mammals. So like sugar gliders. And I've seen hairless guinea pigs too. And there are some people there selling regular guinea pigs and rabbits and hamsters and little things like that as well. And every so often there's a guy that comes in that sells parrots as well. I don't really have any interest in birds because I know birds are a lot of work especially and they're loud and noisy and destructive. Reptiles are quiet and they're very not destructive. So that's what I like about them. So I don't really have any interest in birds. But there is someone that comes and sells parrots so people that are interested in parrots can find those at the event too. You know, there hasn't been one in a while, and I kind of miss going to them. You know, we made a lot of friends through them. Hang on, my dog again. Finn, you okay, buddy? You good? Doug isn't here today, so I think he is missing him. But yeah, we love to go to them, and that's kind of how I've acquired some of my other animals. You know, most of the time I went in knowing I wanted something, and I was looking for that thing specifically because I had the setup for it at home. Uh, the only thing that I really didn't have the setup for was for my big rat snake. I had bought out a pet store that went out of business a few years ago. I bought their, um, they had these big, I don't have them anymore because I kind of sold them off after time, but they had these big fancy wooden display cases that they were, you know, displaying the animals in. So I bought them off them and I fixed them up and everything. And uh, I went to a reptile show and I saw the big white rat snake that I have. And I kept looking over him and I would leave the table, look around the rest of the reptile show, come back to this table, look at the snake leave, come back. I was really fighting it in my mind. I was like, man, that's 
you know, you only have one snake right now, and this is a really, really pretty snake. And he's a good price. Maybe you should ask the people at the table about him. And then I would fight with it. No, you could put something else in those big wooden enclosures. You know, what if you wanted more frogs? What if you wanted another skink like Bucky? I was really fighting with it. But Doug and I both just kept coming back to this table, coming back to it, coming back to it, and looking at the snake. And the guy that was running the table noticed that we were doing this. And he finally said, he finally said, well, are you interested in him? And I was like, I, I don't know. I, I, I think I am, but I'm not sure. You know, there's a lot of different things that could go in the enclosure that I have. And he was like, well, you know, I can get him out and you can hold him if you want to. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, if I get the animal out and hold it, then I'm going to want to take it home. So let's not do that. But he kind of just kept telling me about the snake. Uh, he was telling me that it was a very friendly snake. That whenever he went to feed all the other snakes and clean out the enclosure, the snake always wanted to come out and climb all over him and climb all over the room. Like, he was a very active snake that was very interested in things. Because sometimes some snakes really aren't. They just kind of sit there. I know that makes them sound super boring. But that is true. That is what some snakes do. <laughs> when you keep them as pets. But this one, he was like, yeah, he's very interested in everything. And we've had him for a few years. We've been using him um, as a breeder and we've gotten quite a few babies out of him. And we're just, we're just done breeding rat snakes. We're ready to move on. And so we want to sell them to someone. And I thought about it more and I was like, okay, well, I don't want him to breed or anything. You know, I'm not breeding snakes. I just want them as a pet. So I moved again, and I came back to the table again, and finally this time I was like, okay, you know what? We've been here for several hours now. I haven't seen anything that I want. I'm not taking anything home right now except for some food for everybody. I'll take the snake. I'll do it. I'll take the snake, and I'll put them in my new wooden display case. So... I wrestled with it for a while, and yes, I did take him home, obviously. And I put him in the wooden display case, and it turns out he was a lot bigger than I thought he was. Um, because the container that they had him in, he was all curled up asleep. He wasn't all stretched out. So he was a lot bigger than I thought he was, and he was a little bit too big for the wooden enclosure. So I had to buy the nice black PVC enclosure that he's in now and put it together uh, really fast so I could put him in it so that he had an enclosure that uh, he has room to stretch out in and everything. If you're wondering how big he is, it's hard to say. Um, he never is, like, perfectly straightened out where I could take a measuring tape to him and measure him because he's always on the move. I, the guy didn't lie when he said he's a very active snake that's very interested in everything he is. Uh, he loves to come out and... In Doug's music room, since it used to be a closet, there's, like, those wooden bars hanging up on the wall so that you could put, you know, your clothes on it and stuff. They're, like, stuck in the wall. We can't get them out. He loves to go in there and climb around on those. The snake does. And snake sheds stretch a little bit. So, just based on the fact that snake sheds do stretch a little bit, the snake shed is definitely longer than the snake. I would guess that he's a little over five feet. When I bought him, I was thinking he was more like three feet, so he's definitely bigger than I thought he was. That is how I acquired him. For the most part, that's how I acquired nearly all the animals. Uh, I just found something I was interested in. Did research, happened to go to a show, and find it. That was the only animal I think I've ever just kind of... I didn't do research on it, I just bought it. But um, I already had a snake, and caring for all snakes is pretty much the same. I mean, they all eat mice... And they need heat lights, and they kind of just need a large enough enclosure for them to do whatever they want to do. So I knew, you know, how to care for a snake. But I'm, I'm glad that I purchased him, because he is beautiful. I mean, you know, he's pure white with, like, ice blue eyes. He's beautiful. And he's... 
I wouldn't say he's the star of my collection, but for a lot of people that come over and visit, they really, really like him. I think that either Bucky or Miss Toad would be the star animal for me. But a lot of people really like the rat snake. I think we're going to make the medicine in this syringe green. And I can get him out and I've let kids hold him and adults hold him because I know he's friendly and I can count on him to not bite anyone. Because reptiles are different than a cat or a dog. You can't train them to not bite. It's kind of just in the nature of the animal itself and the animal's own personality. I know that the rat snake is a big baby that's very nosy and likes to explore. And I know he won't harm anyone. I can count on him for that. I can count on my little snake that I have, my little tiny python. I know I say python, but do not worry, he's a pygmy python species, so he will get to be about three feet, give or take. I know I can count on him to try to munch your fingers if you have ate food, so I always have to tell everyone who comes over if you just ate before you got here, you need to go wash your hands with soap or the python is going to try to eat your fingers. He can't really tell the difference in little fingers and little mice, so if he smells food on your hands, he's going to want to eat your hands. He hardly has teeth, though, because he's so little. I think, for the most part, we're almost done with this picture. I wanted her hat and her outfit to stay white like a nurse's outfit, but I don't know if I want to do, yeah, let's make her nails kind of gross, okay. I don't know if I want to do um, this bracelet, not this bracelet, this necklace in glitter or not. Let me put some glitter on her real quick and come back to it and see if I think I want more or not. I'm going to do this little earring here. This is the dual metallic black and red. So that's the color I'm going to do uh, her eyeshadow as as well. I don't know what it's going to show up as on the camera, but as I'm putting it down, it certainly shows up as red. So it might show up as black on the camera. I'm not sure. She does have a pupil in her other eye that's visible, so I need to color that really quickly as well. Um, I still don't know. Let me color her pupil black. Hi, Finn. Yeah, sorry, the dog is up here with me since the dog's gone. Okay, let's color this pupil black. Since the other one's kind of blacked out. All right. I think I'm going to do the tear in the blue and green glitter color. There we go. Hmm. Let me hold this up and look at all the glitter on it. Um, I think that I will do the necklace in a regular color. We'll do a gray chain color, I think, rather than make it glitter. Rather than make it glitter. All right. Here's kind of a gray blue color, so we're going to do that. And I think this picture has turned out well. She kind of has on a lot of chains here for this one necklace. I'm going to assume that's one necklace that's like looped around a lot. So yes, that is how I acquired most of my little creatures. And I've had many of them for several years. A lot of them have pretty long lifespans. Um, a lot of reptiles and amphibians do kind of on average just live longer than dogs and cats do. Um, I think some of the ones that have the shortest lifespans, aside from tarantulas, would be the leopard geckos, which usually they live to be 
Well, okay, maybe the Pac-Man frogs. Those usually live to be about eight. Yeah, I would say the Pat one of the Pac-Man frogs, since they usually have to be about eight. It would be the animal I have with the shortest lifespan. Now, tarantulas, that's a whole different story. If they're a male tarantula, they live to be about two or three, but if they are females, they can live to be 35. So, all right. I don't think I'm going to add, well, okay, I might add just a little bit of paint in a couple places. Let's put just a little bit on here. And let's do some on the pill. There we go. I'm not going to put any on her mask or anything because her mask is matte fabric. So it wouldn't have any shine to it. And I think this looks pretty good. This is a definitely a shorter color enchant for today, but we still got this page done. Let me take out my backing sheet. I always use a page from a magazine as a backing sheet, and it works really well, by the way. As you can see, nothing got on the page after it. All right, I think that we are done for today. Thank you for listening to me talk about my animals for a while, and I think that the nasty nurse turned out pretty good. We're going to say that this is for Nikki's spooky color along. Her spooky season color along, since she is kind of a little bit scary, I think. This is the Monster Girl book, so I'll read to you um, her little bio here on the next page real quick. She's 35. She works at the Municipal Monster Hospital, and it says, don't ask why she's nasty. So, we can assume that perhaps she has been murdering her patients or something, so I think that works for Nikki's spooky season. All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to show you what I've got coming in the mail. Hopefully, it's here soon. I'll make a video as soon as it gets here.